this is the year in which you will understand fusion once and for all. So let's get started. First of all, you're going to need a fusion composition, and then you're going to have to drag these into your timeline. We're going to open these by clicking this icon right here, or simply right click and then open this in your fusion page or click open in fusion page. This is what you're going to see the first time that you open fusion. And if you press two, you're going to see whatever comes into this media out into this screen. If you press one, it will come into this one. Since we're just starting, we're just going to use one screen. So we're going to click this screen up here and that's just going to bring these into an individual screen on our monitor right here. OK, now let's cover the user interface here in Fusion. Here we have these main tab right here where we can find some of the basic notes that you will be using as a beginner or as somebody that has not used Fusion before. So we're going to add a background note and just simply drag and drop these right here and then connect these to the media out. Now I'm going to talk about the connection in a little bit. Those are not the only tools or nodes that you can add. You can find more of them if you go to the effects section and then under tools here in effects, you can find a bunch more things that you can add and then play around with. All of these are a little bit more complex, so I'm not going to be covering those in this video. There's one more way that you can use to find nodes to add into your fusion composition. If you press control and spacebar, you will open the select tool and here you simply want to write down the name of the of the node that you want to add. So this is once you become a little bit more familiar with the nodes inside Fusion. And then if you press enter, this will automatically be added into your composition. So we have this text right here. Any node that you add into your composition, you can see all the values that you can change on them on this right section right here. And you can press things around here. This background, you can change the color. So just move that around and you can change the color. Now on this text node, you have a bunch of more things that you can modify, but we will cover a few of them later in the video. OK, now let's dive into the notes themselves. You will pretty much always use a background note as the starting point of any fusion composition. And you can leave these whatever color you want, or you can make these transparent here. If you make these transparent, then whatever you create in your composition will have a transparent background on top of your video. Now, in this case, just so, the, so that you understand Fusion, we're going to leave these and make these uh, a different color. Now, the main thing that you have to understand in these is that all of the nodes have an output and that will be this little square right here. Even the media out has an output. The media out is basically the last node that you have so that this will show up in the edit page later on. Some nodes have one or more inputs. Now, let me show you what that is. If you grab this text right here and connect these to this background and drop these into the other output, this will automatically create a merge node. Now this merge node right here has this input, which is a background, and then it has a second input, which is the foreground. And then it also has the output that you use to connect these two other things. Now let me quickly interrupt this video to mention the Paperfall Effects, which is a plugin that I've been building and that will be released pretty soon. So if you're interested or you want to create collage animations and add them to your videos, make sure to check that out at paperfalleffects.com. Then you can find a few freebies already set up right there. Now that brings us to the next point, understanding merge nodes. Merge nodes are basically what are going to create your node tree. So what the merge node does is it helps us connect everything together. As I mentioned, the merge node has two inputs. One of them is the background, which is anything that comes and it's going to add as a base layer. And then the second one is the foreground, which means that anything that's on top of here will show up on top of the input that is the background. So let's write text right here. We can see that text here is showing up on top of the background. Now, let me give you a little tip that you might find useful after you get a little bit more used to working in Fusion. If you press Ctrl T with the node selected here with the merge node, what this does is that it will automatically switch both inputs. So the background and the foreground. Now the text is in the background and then we have this background, red background coming from the foreground. So it's covering our text. I'm going to put this back to normal. OK, now when you add more elements into your fusion composition, let's say this background and then I'm going to change the color here a little bit. You will notice that you can simply connect these using the output and then connect these to another merge node. Now, 
another merge node will automatically be created. So you don't have to go and bring another merge node from this tab right here. Once you get used to working in Fusion, you will most likely just press Ctrl and Spacebar to find whatever you want. At least that's how I do it. Now, if you have been paying attention, you probably notice these little triangle on all of these nodes that we have here. That triangle is the mask input, which means that whatever you connect to that triangle will act as the mask for that node. So let me just grab these box right here or this rectangle and I'm going to connect this as a mask to this background. And now we have this background with a shape. Now you can always, as I mentioned earlier, you can play around with the different values right here. Let's say we want to add a little bit more cornering to it, but yeah, we can talk more about that later. Now you can probably see here on our node tree that these, these box is covering our text. You can always change the position of your, let's call these branches of your node tree. As you can see here, we have this box covering our text and we might want to have these be behind it. So what you can do is select these. Now holding shift, you can bring these to this side. And after you see these change into two different colors, you have to hover your click on top of it and then it will connect and show up behind it. If you drag these, and then you don't see the the two different colors of the line behind it and you drop it then it will simply disappear if that happens no big deal you can always get rid of this background or hold shift that, that would delete that connection now we're going to connect these to this merge node again and then to the other input now we have our box behind our text now another quick tip you don't have to create your node tree horizontally like i'm doing that's just the way that I usually do it. Some people like to do this vertically. So what you what it will basically be like is this background will be on top. And then you have these maybe like on this side, like these. And we have these other merge node like that. And that will be basically they will be building the tree down or you can build it up. You are basically free to do so and add it the way that you want or you can just create a huge spider web of things that connect to each other. That's usually what happens when I work on more complex animations and stuff like that. If you are looking for split screens for your videos, make sure to check out the Swabby website because I have a pack that I've been building and that will be continuously updated. Right now, there's a little bit over 250 split screens. So that is it. And now let's continue with the video. All right, so let me just bring this back to normal. That way it's a little bit easier for me to explain. Now let's jump into the next thing that you need to understand, adjusting the node's value. As I mentioned earlier, we have the node values on the right here on the inspector section. If you don't see anything, it's probably because this one is closed. So you just click on these and it will open and it will give you the details of what you can change on each node. One of the first thing that you will probably want to do is adjust the position of your elements. First, when you select a node, you can see this control right here, which you can use that to move things around. If you want to adjust it using the inspector section on the text node, for example, you can go to the transform section or the layout section. And here you can do the same thing and then move them in a little bit more rigid way. Let's call this. Now the background right here doesn't have the options to move things around or doesn't have its own transform options. So what can we do about that? Basically, what you want to do is press Ctrl and Spacebar with this node selected with the background node, and that will automatically add a transform node here in front of this one. If you were not to select the node, it will just add it into like the empty space and you will have to connect it or add it right there, which you can do by holding shift, just simply drag it. And once you see the two colors, it will be added into that tree or into that branch. Okay, now once we select the transform node, we can move things around and we can see that the box is moving, going whatever you want. You can also adjust the values by using the inspector right here. Now, another thing that I want to mention is that now what happens if we have these background nodes selected and we want to add another node that does not have an input value like this transform node? Well, let me show you by adding these background node. If we click these, you will notice that another merge node is created and whatever node you had selected previously will be coming into the merge node as the background and the new one will be added as a foreground 
element. Okay, now you know how the node tree or how you can build your own node tree, how to add elements, how to find the elements, but there's one last thing left, which is probably what you wanna use Fusion for, which is creating animations. Animations in Fusion work with keyframes, so we can see here the timeline, so the values or the duration, each second is comprised by if your timeline is 24 frames per second, then you will see 24 frames right here. That will be one second. So let's say we want to animate the position of our box here. We're going to go to the frame 10 and to animate anything in Fusion, you will have to click on this little diamond that you have here. Any element or any value here on the inspector that has this little icon or this little diamond is an animatable element. So we're going to click on the center here and that will create a keyframe. We can see the keyframe line right here. And then let's say we want to go to frame 24 and then we can modify the position of this box. You can either use the inspector right here or you can use the actual controls that you have here and move it whatever you want. So if we press play or spacebar to press play, you have created your first animation and we have the box moving. You can, you can keep adding more animation or more keyframes by simply adjusting the position again. That will automatically create new keyframes and the animation will continue. Now there's a few more elements here with animation that are a little bit more advanced that I will probably talk about in another video. Let me give you one last little bonus tip. So let's say you wanted to move the text as well. So you wanted the text to move with the box. What you can do is either copy this transform node, simply pressing Ctrl C and then selecting the text and press Ctrl V and now you have that same or basically the same animation but another completely different transform node. Now there's also something called an instance which is basically a clone that you can paste somewhere else and that will affect it the same in the same way. But that's a little bit more advanced. Let me just show you real quick like that you paste an instance by copying the node and then pressing Control shift v uh, you will probably not use this at the beginning later on once you're more familiar with fusion you will probably find it a lot more useful if we press play we can see the text moving as well now there's another last thing that i wanted to tell you about this there's a third option that you can do here as i showed you earlier you can connect things anywhere so if you wanted let's say to make the text for this animation you can simply drag this merge node, holding shift, bring it right here, and then connect the text right there. Or you can simply connect these text right there and another merge node will automatically be created. Now we have this other one that's still there. So you can have two options or two inputs of the same text, but they are both doing something different. If we change it right there, then that happens. And then if you don't want this one, you can just simply get rid of that. And then you have only one branch, but then this branch has another little branch that is the text node added onto it, right? So that's basically one extra bonus tip that I wanted to give you. Now that you understand these things, you can play around and try to create more advanced things in Fusion. You can follow some of my tutorials or you can follow some of the other great tutorials shared by the other creators in this space.